All right, well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us today um, for another one of our educator EarthWatch um, post fielding alumni webinars. Um, and this one in particular is called Free Environmental Education Resources from WGBH. Uh, I am the program coordinator for both our Teach Earth and Project Kindle. Uh, EarthWatch fellowships and we're really excited for the webinar that we have for you guys today. Um, for those who may not be familiar, WGBH is member station of National Public Radio and affiliate of Public Radio International. Um, and today we'll be learning about two PBS Kids web series that these are some really fantastic free resources for teachers and who doesn't love free things, especially, you know, more ways that we can reach our students about, in this case, environmental sustainability. Um, so we'll learn in this, in this webinar how to access these resources um, and ways that you can bring them into your classrooms and schools um, to get the messages out there to your students. And with us today, we'll have two lovely presenters um, who I actually met uh, this past fall at the Massachusetts STEM Summit, uh, where they presented on these resources. And uh, during that presentation, I just couldn't help but, but feel it would be just absolutely perfect for our EarthWatch teacher alumni um, as just another great way that they can keep the messages about sustainability and uh, environmental education uh, constantly getting out there to our students and schools. Um, so with us today, we have Brianne Keith, who is Outreach Project Manager for Plum Landing at WGBH, a leader in development of educational media and public media's largest producer of PBS content for TV and the web. Plum Landing is an innovative digital PBS Kids project aimed at getting families with children six to nine years old outside and active. In addition to her work with Plum, Brienne has written, edited, and produced several other youth and media programs with WGBH's education department. Also with us today, we have Nikki Siriani, who is the Outreach and Digital Marketing Specialist at WGBH in the Education Department. Nikki manages the social media pages and community outreach for several WGBH Kids brands, including Design, Design Squad Global, which we'll learn about today, an Emmy award-winning PBS Kids program, Pinkalicious and Peterific, a PBS Kids show about getting creative, and Molly of D Denali, a brand new show featuring the adventures of an Alaska native girl. Prior to working for WGBH, Nikki worked as a preschool teacher in a school that champions an anti-bias curriculum and as a therapeutic mentor. Nikki received her Master of Child Study in Human Development from Tufts University. Her graduate studies focused on the creation of developmentally appropriate educational media and the impact of media gender representation on children. She holds a Bachelor of Arts from Boston University in Psychology and Art History. Before I hand it over to Brianna and Nikki, uh, just a couple bits of information about the, the webinar software that we're using today. Um, you'll notice either at the top or bottom of your computer screen um, that there's an option for Q&A. Um, and please feel welcome at any time during the webinar to submit questions you might have in that box. Um, at the end of both Brianne and Nikki's presentations, we'll leave some time for questions and those will then be addressed. Um, so always at any point, if questions come up while they're presenting, feel free to type them in there. Um, you'll also notice along that same bar, there's a box called chat box. And that will be if you have any technical difficulty with the, the webinar and the software, if it's the volumes not working, if there's anything of that sort, um, please feel welcome to type it in there and we will work on our end to help uh, resolve that technical issue. Additionally, just to know, we are recording this webinar. Um, so, and can, you know, it can be hard. Teachers are busy. You might not all be able to make it. Um, so if you have other teacher alumni, Project Kindle alumni that you know wanted to be here and couldn't, 
um, please feel welcome to share that recording with them. It will be going on the Earthwatch YouTube channel once ready. Um, you can also, of course, if during this you know of other teachers at your school that would really benefit from these resources. Um, you know, the more teachers we can reach with this, the better. We would love to get these messages, these resources out there. Um, so once that, that link has gone on the YouTube channel, please feel welcome to share. Um, so with no farther ado, I'm going to hand it over now to Brianne, and she'll talk a bit about one of the two resources at WGBH. All right. Um, switching over here. Okay, can everybody, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, uh, welcome everybody. Welcome teachers. Um, so, uh, we, I feel so grateful to be able to, to talk to you guys today about um, Plum Landing. Um, as I know, you guys are all busy. Um, as Dana said, I'm an outreach manager in the education department. So, my job is to really get the word out about Plum um, and all the, the great resources under the brand, and, which are all free. Um, I usually reach out to all sorts of organizations like after school programs, libraries, and youth development organizations, museums, um, but also schools as well. So I'm, I'm glad to be able to, to have this chance to talk to you guys. Um, so what is Plum Landing? Plum Landing um, is our all digital environmental science project that WGBH created for our PBS kids. Uh, we created it with funds from the National Science Foundation. Um, the project is for kids six to nine years old. So teachers of children, uh, teachers of first grade, second grade, third grade as well, um, although this program does skew a little younger. So I think second grade, or, second grade is our sweet spot. Um, Oops, sorry, are you able to share your screen? Yep. Perfect. It, it, can you see it now? I'm sorry, there's... Um, not yet, no. Oh, okay, sorry for the technical difficulty. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, there we go. Did we hear? Okay, sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, okay, so we're all set now, right? Yes. All right, um, moving on. Uh, so, so the mission of the project was really to produce digital materials that would get kids outdoors actively learning about environmental science. Usually we think of digital resources um, as sort of keeping kids out of uh, you know, nature and keeping them inside, but we were trying to think of ways to utilize the fact that kids are on phones and iPads and all these things um, and utilize those tools to actually get them engaged in the outdoors. And you'll kind of see this play out as I talk more about the resources um, and how we did that. Um, the project is based on a character named Plum, who is a, a purple alien from the planet Blorg, who is curious about Earth. So she comes to Earth and enlists five kids to help her investigate and explore nature and report back to her about what they find. Um, she sends kids on missions on a particular topic, so investigate noises in nature and find out what, what's causing them or how water flows through a city um, and other sort of like environmental uh, science topics or investigate, you know, investigative uh, missions, which help kids understand key environmental concepts. Um, Plum then shares the kids' reports with her fellow Blorbians back home. So that's, that's sort of the, the, the storyline uh, upon which all these resources are based. Um, with this premise, we were able to position kids as scientific explorers, actively practicing science in inquiry skills like observing, exploring, reporting, and reflecting while they're learning about science. Um, since uh, we launched the site in 2014, um, this past, uh, last iterate, we've been, we've been adding materials along the way, and this last iteration of materials uh, focused on urban science, so uh, we created a new suite of animations and activities geared towards um, the environmental concepts that, that take place uh, in the city. So 
you know, the idea was to sort of reach kids that are living in these urban environments who maybe are most at risk of not going outdoors and helping them like see that even though they live um, in sort of the quote concrete jungle, there's nature going on there too. Um, so, you know, since the, since its debut, it's, it, this this site has reached uh, lots of folks. It's it's uh, I think there's over 65 million page views at this point, and it's won several awards, including a Gold Parents Choice Award uh, for the Plum Apps and a Silver Award for the entire site. Let me see. So let me, uh, I'm going to show you guys a video which, which uh, will introduce you to Plum and sort of the project. It's Plum, Plum Landy, exploring together in ways and weather. It's Plum, Plum Landy, Earth is so connected more than a second. It's Plum. and sort of the flavor of, of the project itself. Um, so as you saw, Plum uh, and her five earthling friends go out and explore things that they find um, in, in the environment. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is uh, give you a walkthrough of the different categories of resources that are on the site. Um, people can, can generally just pick and choose what they want. Um, but we also have uh, sort of pre-made um, curricula pathways for people to pick up and use for you know certain lengths of, of uh, classroom time. And I'll talk about those as well. But the, the big message here is that you really can use these materials as you see fit and they're really adaptable as you know separate units. Um, so the first thing uh, I'll talk about the, the animated webisodes. So these are the, the animations that really anchor all the materials on the site. So they give the main storyline of the characters. Um, they're two to five minute, vid you know, long videos. Um, and they can be streamed from any device with a Wi-Fi signal. Um, so they're, they're, you know, from a, a phone even, they could be streamed. Uh, the animations are characterized by worlds or ecosystems in nature, like desert world, mountain world, and city world. And the characters visit each of these worlds and learn about um, the environmental science concepts that happen in them. Um, the next sort of category of resources are games. So there are also, we also have online games, and they connect right in with those topics, uh, like deserts and mountains and cities. Um, kids can play the games online. Um, there's kids like there's games like predator and prey games where kids need to keep an animal alive by getting what it needs to survive uh, while avoiding predators. Um, there's also a game that I like. It's it's on seeds. Uh, it's it's a kids chase seeds and and sort of uh, learn about which seeds travel fastest um, so they can understand the concept of seed dispersal. Um, and these games uh, are also, you know, they can just be used on their own and, and many people I've heard do use them just as a, as a separate resource to support whatever's going on in the classroom. Um, the next category of resource is uh, the, the hands-on activities. So this is sort of the, the meat of the, of the project. Uh, these are hands-on outdoor science learning activities that help kids practice um, the science inquiry skills. 
uh, you know, under the NGSS uh, framework really is, is what we match them to. Um, and there are activities for parents and educators. So we split them into two different categories. So we have a whole suite of activities where parents can just download them from the site and do them with their families at home. And then a whole suite of activities for educators. And we split those activities for educators into those educators that lead uh, outdoor science activities with families and those that lead uh, outdoor science activities with just kids. So that could be in an after school or a, class, a you know a formal school setting. Um, the next uh, category of resource are the live action videos, and the reason why we create these is to sort of give um, a sort of launching pad into the activities. So they're short, and they give uh, basically they just show people uh, actually doing the activities. Um, they're a good way to get kids sort of grounded in what they're about to do. And kids do like watching the other kids sort of uh, exploring. Um, so it's, it's also a way to sort of visualize the, the, the exploration and the use of uh, practice of, of these science inquiry skills. Um, so kids can sort of see what goes on um, before, they, before they practice them themselves. Um, and again, they, these can be streamed Separately, uh, there's actually with each video there are um, little activities that are tagged onto them, so they they're really a separate resource themselves, but they can also be used to introduce the hands-on science activities. Um, the the next category of resources are, that we have are the apps. So um, this is the, these three images are from our Plum Plum's Photo Hunt app, which was the first app that we created. Um, the app is, uh, it sends kids on missions. So once they open it up, uh, Plum will pop up and, and ask which type of mission the child would like to go on. It could be plants, a plant mission, an animal mission, a weather mission. Um, and so the, the Plum will like here say, take a picture of uh, signs of animal life and the child will take a picture and then uh, have a choice of which character character to photobomb the, the picture with um, and then send it to our website and it goes up on a gallery on the site. Uh, one thing to say here is that, that um, kids can uh, create a profile on our site where they keep all of their images um, in different um, pieces of art that they can make on the site with other tools that I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, the other two apps that we recently created are Creaturizer um, and Outdoor Family Fun with Plum. So Creaturizer is similar to out the, the, this Plum's Photo Hunt app. app. Um, it asks kids to create their own key creature and then go out outside and find a place where that creature could live. So kids would create, let's say, uh, a, a, a creature with fins. That's one of the options. So then they might go find a place where there's water. So it, teach, it sort of gets them thinking about adaptation. Um, the Outdoor Family Fun with Plum app is, is really unique in that it's geared towards families. Usually our apps are just for, are geared towards kids. Um, but the Outdoor Family Fun Pl with Plum app is uh, really for parents to use um, to give them something to do uh, with kids outside. It's, it, it aims to get kids to make a, ha I mean families to make a habit of going outside. So. It's kind of based on the couch to 5 2K concept where you start from zero, I don't go outside ever, and then you build up um, by sort of getting incentives and points for, for doing um, missions outside. The other, uh, the next sort of re category of resource uh, are the outdoor adventures badging uh, feature. And this is really for parents as well. Um, what parents can do is do you choose a, a mission with their kids, go outside and, and um, complete the mission and come back and use the online nature uh, sketchpad journal, which is a drawing tool that you can stream from the website uh, and draw what they see or draw whatever the, the mission asks them to draw. Uh, and that image as well goes up on, the, on a gallery on the site. Um, 
And the other, this, this, uh, this is a new category of resources that, that we just created. Uh, they're parent and educator videos and they're, they're very short and they offer tips for leading and doing outdoor science activities. So, you know, educators know how to do science activities, but what are the common things that you're gonna sort of um, come across when you're doing them outside? Uh, rain, how do, you, how do you deal with rain or, uh, you know, um, keeping everybody sort of in one place when they want to run around and things like that. So they, they're, they're um, hosted by experienced educators uh, who, 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 Jesse Scott in particular, um, who works for the U.S. Forest Service, who have tons of experience um, leading, these out, leading outdoor science activities with kids and families. Um, so how, I'm just gonna sort of very quickly, cause I'm running out of time, uh, go into how other places have used Plum. And, you know, some of these won't apply to you guys cause you're schools, but they, they kind of give a sense of, of the broad ways that you can, can use these, uh, these resources. Um, the Ecotarium is a science museum in Worcester, Mass. Uh, they held a screening of plum landing, plum landing animation during their Earth Day event, and then they, they did a plum event on the premises. Um, the screening is kind of a fun thing to do, create like a family night. I've seen people do that as well um, at after schools where they, they screen the animations and they use it as like a discussion uh, for ways to go outside and ways to explore nature outside. Um, the next idea is, is just holding a plum outdoor event. Um, you can, you know, the, all these activities are, most of them are, are, are outdoor, but there are some indoor activities as well. But um, a lot of groups have, uh, you know, held outdoor, outdoor events on plum and they use the, one of the most popular thing is using the plums photo hunt app and just sending families and kids on missions using that app. Um, and then incorporating Plum into your programming. So these activities are a good way to sort of supplement whatever is going on in the classroom, as I said before, whatever science concept, uh, science topic, maybe you're talking about plants one week, um, this is a good way to sort of give them to, something to do outdoors, um, to, 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 to talk more about that topic and give them hands-on uh, science learning experience. Um, it, the library held a, a, in Vermont had a digital badging challenge, so they sent families uh, uh, out to do some of those outdoor adventures I was talking about, and then families who earned 12 badges uh, could return to the museum and receive prizes, so it was a good way to sort of incentivize uh, the use of that um, that tool and also sort of get parents to the library. Um, back to the library because they 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 printed out uh, pictures of, of the pictures that families took and created a mural there. Um, so why plum landing? These are the top reasons that we've heard uh, and we sort of you know created around um, for for creating uh, for building this site. Um, the plum gives kids hands-on outdoor science learning experiences. That's sort of the primary goal of the project. Um, it helps, it definitely helps connect kids and families to nature. One of the other goals is to just get everybody outside. Um, and it, it, it uses the, the power of digital media to, to engage kids. So like I was saying, if they're gonna, kids are gonna be on phones, here's a way to sort of get them to use the phone to actually get them to look at what's going on outside. Um, it fosters kids' knowledge and interest in nature. A lot of kids come back and, and are definitely more interested in the world around them after using especially the apps. Um, they're free, they're easy to use, and there's no training necessary to use them. Um, here's just some quotes uh, from people who've used uh, the materials. This is one from an ed after school educator um, who was saying that, you know, the kids really liked watching the episodes. So the animations um, and and they also did the watershed activity they built watersheds which was which is a kind of more involved activity but um, but kids are having fun doing that the interactive games uh, of it, this technology teacher in Louisiana was just using the games um, for 
for her program. Um, and she noted that the science vocabulary words were uh, a, a real integral part of the game format, which was intentional. We have toolkits. Um, if you're interested in one, please reach out to me. One is on the website. You can actually download it, but one is not. They're both really similar. The one on the left, uh, Explore Outdoors Toolkit, is the one on the site. Um, and it just gives ideas on how to create a plum, a plum sort of its own unique program in your program, um, and also ways to adapt the resources. And the, the one on the right, the toolkit is really geared more towards museums and after school programs, but it definitely gives some uh, really colorful examples of the use of plum out in the world. Um, so with that, I will uh, uh, hand this over to Nikki, but um, this is my contact information um, here. So uh, and we'll, we'll also give that out in the YouTube uh, link, I believe. Um, okay. Okay, I am getting ready to pop on. Great, um, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about Design Squad Global today. Um, it's another one of our programs at PBS Kids um, and produced and made here at WGBH. Um, but this program is geared towards older students, so our target age group is middle school age students. And just to give you a brief history of Design Squad Global, we started as a television show on PBS Kids. Um, and the whole purpose of the show is to get kids really excited about engineering and to show other kids doing engineering projects. Um, and that quickly evolved into a website. Um, and we just noticed such a hunger for kids to have opportunities to do more hands-on things at home. So we create, built this whole website where kids could share design ideas, um, find like tutorials for how to do things at home, and watch um, more videos and things as well. Um, when they... Uh, when they can, what they can do on the website. And then um, along with that, we kind of committed to a lot of outreach efforts and a lot of partnerships and training events and just another other ways and opportunities for us to help share with educators um, and teachers ways to talk to kids about engineering in a fun kind of approachable way um, instead of a, unfortunately, like we often hear from kids that are like, engineering is so boring and all you do is build bridges. And we want to say, no, that's not what engineering is. Um, and let us show you things like ice cream engineers and a kid who built this really cool basketball hoop or other ways that engineering can really be applicable to kids daily lives. Um, so one of those outreach opportunities or things that we created is something called our Design Squad Global Clubs. And these are after school or in school engineering and invention clubs for middle schoolers. And what these clubs do is they partner clubs in the US with clubs in another country. So together they share in these kind of engineering activities together. So they build on these STEM skills, but also build on these skills of learning to work and collaborate with people from another part of the globe. So I'm gonna play a short video, just our overview of DSG. Design Squad Global offers authentic opportunities for middle school youth around the world to collaborate on real world engineering projects. Design Squad Global is young people learning to open up their mind to a whole world of possibilities. It's STEM education, it's global competencies, it's creating the future leaders. Funded by the National Science Foundation and the Limelson Foundation, after-school programs around the world are working together to design solutions to help people in their communities. So the kids wanted to make a step stool where the grandma can get on it and reach something that's high. And they put a cushion on the top and underneath they put old tire tracks that they cut up because they didn't want the stool to slide around on the concrete floor. They were really excited about it. So they designed a solar panel cushion for senior citizens that'll give them massages while they rest. A medicine wall where they would drop medicine into little tubes and they would go into these little cups of water for them daily. Once they finish designing, partner sites present their engineering solutions to each other. The main thing was also for young people to interact. Because even the concept of like someone across the world is seeing their work, it's mind-blowing to them. 
Their interaction sometimes results in a few surprises. The perception that our kids had about the kids in South Africa, that they were poor, malnutritious, not fed, not happy. Kids in South Africa are convinced that U.S. kids are very rich. And my kids are like, rich? <laughs> like, that doesn't describe us at all. So it was really good to see them break down those cultural barriers that our stereotypes. And it was really fun to see them that they understand that we all live in countries with challenges. The project is having a significant, measurable impact on kids and educators. After participating in DSG, kids increase their understanding of engineering, their interest in people and places around the globe, and their confidence that they could solve problems and create change. And educators increase their comfort leading engineering activities and collaborating with educators from other countries. DSG is being disseminated in the US and countries across Asia, Africa, Europe, and South America, enabling kids all over the world to work together to solve real world problems. For us in our country, engineering is still a predominantly male industry. And our girls sometimes are scared to use their imagination. It just opened up their minds a bit to thinking about how they could get these kind of jobs, how they could go into this industry. When I talk about it with my boss, with the people that I work with, it's like I am from the future. So that's a basic overview of Design Squad Global, but I'm going to share with you guys today something we're really excited about. We just launched a brand new collection of activities um, called our Inventing Green Guide. And this is chop same kind of clubs, our same kind of structure, but filled with all activities that get kids to think about engineering um, in the context of environmental sustainability and what it means to kind of be an engineer or create something new um, while keeping the environment in mind. Um, so I'm going to go through some of our new challenges and some of our new activities. Um, this one's called flight test. And this, the purpose of this is to get kids to think about how to make a different shape of an airplane so that they reduce drag and therefore don't need to use as much fuel to power the airplane through the air. And we do this by having kids build airplanes out of spoons and paper clips because why not? Um, it's a really fun dynamic one. Kids love like timing themselves and then using the design process to go back and to see if they can keep getting a better and better time. Um, this activity is my personal favorite. It's called sneakers. And this is a materials challenge where we're asking kids to really think about the materials that go into making sneakers, which is often plastic. And we challenge them, can you build a sneaker using materials that are better for the environment? Can you think of a better way to still wear a comfortable cushioning sneaker, but that has materials in it that won't, won't cause as much harm when, you, when you're done using those sneakers? Um, light pipes is a really cool challenge where we're challenging kids to think of ways to bring natural light into homes that might not have windows um, and using kind of reflective materials um, to reduce electricity needs or electricity costs in homes. Then we have, Ooh, my slides are stuck. Oops, sorry guys, small problem. There we go, we have wind power station, which is challenging kids to build their own wind turbines um, and asking them to harness them to do some useful work. So again, getting kids to think about how we can use renewable energy sources in our inventions and our engineering creations. And then we have two bonus activities. This is one of the bonus activities called gears, where we ask kids to add on gears to those wind turbines that they built originally. And we challenge them to say, can you lift a whole brick using just wind power and these gears to add more force to your wind turbines? And then our other bonus is tableware to go. This is another materials challenge where we ask kids, can you think of a way to create to go silverware that's either better for the environment or can you think of a way to encourage people to bring their own silverware from home so they don't need to use plastic utensils or bamboo chopsticks. Um, so I want to go a little bit more into um, our 12-week program. We have two options. You can either do a six-week program which just has our activities 
or the 12 week program, which leads kids through our activities and then ends with kids coming up with their own original invention. You heard some of them in the video. We ask kids, you know, how can you make your community safer, healthier, better for the environment, et cetera. And we let them interview kids in their community and come up with their own original project. Um, here are some examples of some partner projects. My personal favorite is mirror glasses. A group of students said, every time the teacher turns around from the classroom, we always like mess around. So we're gonna design these glasses so the teacher can write on the board but still see what's going on behind them so we can't get in trouble anymore. Um, and then I have an example in the bottom left from Vietnam, actually, a group of students um, acknowledge that flooding is a really big issue for their community. So they built a model of these houses that actually float over water whenever flooding occurs. And they also built a flooding alarm system so it'll alert people that the water level is rising and they should start you know, moving their valuables up to higher levels in their home. And in the bottom right, that was a group from London who created a boat made out of using recycled materials. They're really thinking about materials that are better for the environment. And now that they've made this boat, they actually go out onto the river and they collect more trash and garbage. So they're using their recycled material to clean up and um, gather more materials and hopefully use those for future recycled projects as well. So we have had over 700 clubs from 40 different countries um, across the globe, which has been really exciting for Design Squad Global Inventing Green. Our international communities are really strong right now in India, Malawi, and Africa. Um, so if you're interested in that portion of the program, it's really exciting for kids to get to connect um, with kids from a whole other country from another space around the world. Um, this is what our club guides look like. So when you when you look at the activity, you'll see kind of the overview of what you'll be doing in that session. And you'll also see the science concepts that are introduced um, on the front page of those sessions. So you'll see for sneakers, we talk about the science concepts of force and a life cycle and biodegradable. Um, and it kind of breaks down the different engineering and invention concepts as well as the environmental sustainability concepts. And this helps make it easier for educators to incorporate some of our activities into their curriculum to kind of meet whatever state requirements that they might have. Um, also within our club guides, which are again totally free, you'll get all kind of club materials you would need, including club member cards and badges, also recruitment flyers and letters to parents and kind of any, any sort of supporting materials that you would need. The only thing not included in our clubs is the actual materials needed to do the activities, but those are all pretty low cost and things you might already have in your classroom, such as tape and rubber bands and cardboard and things along, along those lines. Um, to accompany our club guide, we also have developed some new professional development videos, which you can watch and download for free on the PBS Learning Media website. I have it, the link down there below. Um, we have three for our original club guide that go into more of the basics of how to run a club, but these videos kind of drill down more into um, what is the concept in, of invention and why do we teach it to kids and how do we create a classroom that kind of inspires kids to invent new things and then what does environmental sustainability look like in the context of invention. Um, so these are really great ways to kind of brush up on that knowledge if you're already familiar or to kind of orient yourself if you've never taught this material before. We try to make it as easy as possible for educators um, when they're introducing this to their students. So our clubs run throughout the year in five different kind of club dates. You can choose if you'd like to partner with a club, you kind of have to follow these club dates. That way we can match you with an international group. If you would like to just rub the club solo, you're more than welcome to do that as well. And then you can just download the materials and you don't have to really follow these deadlines as much. Um, you are also more than welcome to partner with a club that you already know of. And you can, when you sign up, say, I would like to be matched with this partner club. We're gonna run it together. Um, or if you don't have a partner club, we will happily pair you with someone as well. You can also choose to run it with just another club in the US if that's also your option. We try to keep this as flexible as possible. Um, we really wanna make this work for your program. Um, so this is how you would register for a club if you are interested. It's just a Google sign up link. Once you register and sign up, I'll send you a confirmation email. Um, and once you confirm, then I'll send you another email with your partner club information. Um, and then you kind of kick it off from there with your partner club and email and discuss how you're gonna kind of share the work that you're doing together. We really leave this up to partner clubs to figure out what kind of communication style works best for them. 
Now, a lot of people ask me, oh my goodness, like I'm not in after school. Can I run a club still? What if I just want to use the activities? We say um, our materials are there for you to use whichever way works best for your program. If you can't run a formal club, feel free to pull out individual activities. Um, we are just happy that people are using our materials, to be honest. Um, so what we do have on the PBS Learning Media website, where you'll find all these resources, is we do have the national standards and state standards already there. So if you are an educator in your classroom and you want to look up and see, hey, gee, I wonder which standards this will align for me, you can find all of that information. So we hope that makes it easier for educators to kind of fold some of these resources into their classroom if that's what they would like to do. Um, clubs can be run in any sort of program, in school, after school, in libraries. Anybody who wants to run a club is more than willing to sign up and run a club. I just wanna point out a few other resources and then I will be happy to answer some questions. This is our main kid facing website um, for Design Squad Global. Here kids can find short fun video clips like you see the chicken feeder challenge on here. Um, they can also find design challenges where we challenge kids to submit kind of drawings for their design ideas for new inventions. You can also find building activities which are DIY tutorials for some of our engineering activities and their photo essays so they're really easy for kids to follow. And you can also find some of our games. Um, in the top right hand corner, you will see a parents and educator um, gray block. If you click on that gray block, it'll bring you to this site, which actually has a list of every single one of our activities that we've ever developed, organized by category. And you'll see for those activities, you'll see um, the, whatever version we have, sometimes we have them in other languages like English and Spanish, you'll find that activity tutorials, some of them will also have leader notes for educators if you need help learning how to, how to help lead these activities with your kiddos, and usually you'll find the accompanying video as well, um, which can kind of make these, these activities come to life for some kids. Um, we do have some new web videos coming soon, which are our shorter, um, I say YouTube friendly videos. They'll all be focused on environmental sustainability. These are some of our past videos that have focused on that topic. Um, coming soon, we have one kiddo, this young kid engineer, she invented a robot that detects plastic in the water. Um, so we're doing a video on her. We also have a video coming up about making stomp rockets using recycled materials, which is a really fun, a really fun project. So stay tuned for some new web videos all about environmental sustainability. We will also have a new game coming soon. Um, here are some of our current games that are up there. Um, Feed the Fidgets and Don't Flood the Fidgets um, already kind of have an environmental edge to them. In Feed the Fidgets, you make an aquaponic farm for growing, growing food with aquaponics. And in Don't Flood the Fidget, you're thinking about building a flood-resistant city and how you can use techniques like building rain gardens or things like that to reduce your flooding. Um, the new game coming soon will be about building wind turbines for the fidgets and learning how to pass power a city using renewable energy sources. So now I'm more than happy to answer any questions along with Brianne if you had any questions about club landing. Um, and if you can't think of anything now that's totally fine, please feel free to email me at Nikki underscore Sirianni at WGBH.org. All right. Thank you, Brianne and Nikki. Um, for those, I noticed there were some that, that jumped in during that presentation. Um, so for those of you who, who missed the start, um, there is a Q&A box that's gonna be located either at the top or bottom of your screen. Um, so if you have any questions that came up, feel free to type them in now um, and we can go through. We've got well, just about 12 minutes or so that, that we can dedicate to answering some of those questions. Um, so with that, let's see. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll start by reading these questions off and then Brianna and Nikki, um, you can answer as see fit. Um, so we do have one, one person who noted they did arrive a little bit late and are wondering about contact, uh, oh, I guess they got the email, so they have the email address. Um, and I will add along with that. Um, so you do have Nikki and Brianne's emails. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to bring up that page again, um, just so they're able to see. Um, and along with that, uh, you can always email Earthwatch at fellowshipawards at earthwatch.org. Um, and we can also make sure those questions 
get directed um, to whoever might need to see them at WGBH. I'm going to type in my email into the question box. That way everybody can. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Oh, and also wondering if it's possible to get a copy of the slideshow. Yes, I am happy to provide that. And I'm sure Brianna's as well. Yes. Yep, absolutely. Great. Um, and another way that we can make sure that happens um, is that this, this entire webinar has been recorded and will be going on the Earthwatch YouTube channel. And when we do that, we can provide links and information necessary. So if you are someone watching this recording and not here at this moment, um, that we will have ways to get you these resources. We want them to get to every teacher they possibly can. Um, so this is, is something that we want to support you all with. Um, let's see, I do have a couple other questions that came in through the chat. Um, the first of which is for Brianne, um, and so this is about Plum Landing and wondering if any of these videos and activities come in other languages other than English, since a lot of the families at this teacher's school, uh, English is not a first language. Um, that's a great question. Um, so as a, as a sort of common protocol at WGBH, we usually translate, or at least try, um, to translate any parent-facing materials into at least one language. Um, so all of the, none of the videos, um, except for um, the parent, um, it, yes, it's just the parent tips videos, those are translated into Spanish. Um, those are tips for parents uh, on how to lead uh, outdoor science explorations with their kids. I think there's eight of them. Um, and all of our parent activities are in Spanish, but none of the educator activities are, and none of the animations are, uh, and none of the live action videos are. So the parent videos, tip videos, uh, eight of those, and then all the parent activities are in Spanish. And sometimes, I just want to say too, that sometimes um, after school programs actually adapt the parent activities to their programming. So as I was kind of saying before, a lot of the stuff on the site can be adapted for different uh, purposes. It's sort of the way it was created. Um, Great. Thank you, Brianne. Uh, let's see. This question is for Nikki about Design Squad Global. Um, the teacher is wondering how you guys manage the language barriers if you have two different schools and one, you know, if it's a school in the US and a school in Kenya or just some country where, again, English might not be the first language. How, how are those sessions communicated? That's a great question. Um, so for Design Squad Global, because we are international, um, we do require that all of the club leaders have to have at least like a basic understanding or ability in English, um, but we do not require that the kids in the club necessarily have to be able to speak English. Um, and we just ask that so the club leaders can kind of facilitate this exchange of materials back and forth. Um, I will say we had a lot of clubs running in Jordan and Lebanon um, this past this past year, and many of those students did not speak English, but the club leaders did. So we still have students kind of introduce themselves in their native language, um, and we make use of a lot of photos and videos. Um, and what's really great about engineering is even if um, you might not understand what that person is saying, you can still communicate a lot about your ideas and your invention. Um, using kind of images and photos um, and students are really great at picking up on nonverbal cues as well. Um, so we do ask that our club leaders um, have some ability to speak English, um, but our students usually find pretty awesome ways of communicating without needing to speak directly to one another. Great. Thank you, Nikki. And I'm looking at the time. I think we have time for one more question. Um, and this is one, I, it was written about Plum Landing, but I think this could stretch to either of you guys, um, which is um, this teacher is asking if, if Plum Landing is something that a non-science teacher could also use. I am an elementary art school teacher. Um, and I did notice during the presentation, some art specific resources. 
And so I guess I would, I would have both of you answer this to see as well for Design Squad Global. Is that something that you think teachers that aren't science teachers um, could also use? Um, absolutely. So uh, we actually created a set of videos specifically for that reason. Um, they're the educator tip videos. They're kind of buried in the site. So please feel free to email me with a direct link to them. Um, but those videos are uh, tips on leading science, uh, outdoor science activities. Uh, if you've never done that before, really is what those tips are for. Um, all right to you know, answer any sort of questions that would naturally come up if you don't really have that much experience doing uh, outdoor science activity, hands-on activities, um, and also sort of the, you know, outlining the typical, the common pitfalls you might, you might come across. So yeah, they, and, and a lot of the activities have tons and tons of scaffolding um, for that purpose as well. Um, and the art aspect, we have, th there's, a, there's a fun tool on the site, it's a nature sketch pad. So kids could, the idea is that kids would use an iPad, they'd go outside and they'd draw what they see using the tool. Um, so you would click on, on the buttons on the, on the tool to draw things. You know, there's a paintbrush icon, there's a pencil icon, um, and then it, it, it saves as a picture and that gets put, put up onto the site. So lots of art that's probably where you saw the art um from the kids uh that's what that's where they're they're creating it is on the site through that tool so i can give you a link to that tool as well great thank you brianne and i don't know nikki do you have anything you want to add to that specific yeah. design squad? yes happy to jump in um we found we initially were creating design squad global that most teachers did not have an intense understanding of engineering um and it is more of a specialized science. So when we create all of our resources, we really try to keep that in mind, especially because we were at first kind of trying to reach after school program leaders um, who often are not engineers. Um, so we try to create all of our materials as, as teacher friendly as possible. Um, and that doesn't mean to dumb it down. It just means to make the concepts as easy for teachers to explain and to make sure that they feel confident and grounded in the concepts that they're trying to teach to kids as well. Um, and we see a lot of overlap between engineering and other subjects. Um, we just explored um, environmental sustainability, but I think with art too, this idea of um, creating something new in that creative process um, is something really exciting. So we, we champion a project-based learning approach. Um, so we really hope that teachers are, are open to that kind of method of teaching. And if you are open to that, um, I think you'll be able to teach our materials no problem. Great, all right, well, uh, first and foremost, thank you so much, Nikki and Brianne, for taking the time today to, to share these wonderful resources. I hope for the teachers listening that you found this really helpful and are starting to come up with some ideas and ways that you might be able to bring these resources back to your students and schools. Um, you do have their contact details. Um, and again, you can always email fellowshipawards at earthwatch.org if you have any additional questions about these two PBS Kids resources and how to really make that happen and get them, get them up in your schools. Um, if you have any, any other things, teachers that you think would would really want to see this webinar it is being recorded um, and so as i mentioned at the start once once i've got it all downloaded i will get it up on our earthwatch youtube channel um, so please feel welcome to share this with anyone who might not have been able to make it here today um, and also for our, our teacher webinar series that we have here at Earthwatch, we are always seeking new ideas uh, for webinars just like this one. So if you have any ideas, if you wanna present or you wanna recommend someone who you think would, would be great to present on a topic that would benefit our teacher community here at Earthwatch, um, please, again, you can email fellowshipawards at earthwatch.org um, to let us know and we can look into setting that up. Um, but with that, we are at just about the end of the hour. So thank you again, everyone, for taking the time to join this webinar. And we hope you'll find these resources really helpful in your schools. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Bye, guys.
Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.